So Code in Game is laid out as a progress map where you have your starting point, you have AI bots, you learn how to do those, you have algorithms, which are puzzles, and then you have Clash of Code, which is uh, basically short little competitions. And each of these has a track that asks you to do different types of challenges in order to progress to the next item. Um, we're going to start with the introductory challenge. Uh, so believe it or not, there are 1.8 million people who have attempted the onboarding. Um, and this is, these are my last activities up here. Uh, these are some of the things that I did recently when I was preparing for this video. So we're going to go to the onboarding. And as you can see, it was completed by 1.8 million. Um, there is a very steep learning curve. So of those 1.8 million people, not all of them went to go on and complete other challenges. And so in this first video, I'm going to prepare you with the knowledge that you need in order to not just be in the top 50%, but probably the top 10%, I would say, of coding gamers. Uh, so you will rush ahead of the pack, but that, again, is mainly because the learning curve is so steep, and a lot of people give up right at the beginning. There's really no need to. Um, it's going to be hard for everybody. And uh, so if it's hard, that does not mean that programming isn't for you. That just means that you need to spend more time on it. So give yourself that time. It's difficult for everybody, and the people who don't realize that it's supposed to be difficult, I think they just run off. And uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and get into that. So we're going to go to the onboarding challenge and solve it. So it introduces you to the format of how this, uh, pretty much the whole system is going to be laid out. There's an IDE where you're going to do your coding. There's going to be this window where usually there's graphics and it sort of illustrates what your bot is doing and or what your uh, you know puzzle challenge is doing and uh, and then there's this readout below that so let's go ahead got it okay so this is your mission statement it does give you a goal and it asks you uh, in this case to take the information about the enemy one and its distance and enemy two and its distance and uh, you have to output which one to shoot, uh, whichever one is the closest enemy. So uh, that's the challenge for this one. Got it. And as you can see in yellow, those are going to be, those are variables. So it's giving you those variables. You can choose any programming language uh, that they have on here. There's quite a lot to choose from. I'm going to be doing this in Python. And uh, they actually gave us for this first challenge the code that you would need to beat this. So uh, this says, if the distance one is less than distance two, then we're gonna print enemy one because that means the enemy one is the closer uh, enemy. That's the one that we should be shooting at. Else, print enemy two. So I'm gonna copy this code and I am going to paste it right where it says enter the code here. Notice that this is within the game loop. We have while one. So in other words, this is saying while true. And if it's a zero, then it's false. If it's a one, then it's true. Um, and so while true means that it's always going to keep playing. So this is this loop is not going to stop. It's going to keep going. And it's going to feed us the enemy one, which is going to be the, the string that says the name of that enemy. It's going to be the distance one, which is going to be an integer, which is, um, you know, how far away that en enemy is. And that's going to be another input that they give us. They give us enemy two and they give us uh, distance two. So this is fed to us through the um, game engine. It's, it's going to be giving us these input values. What we have to do is put together the logic that will decide what to do with those values. So again, if distance one, is less than distance two, we're gonna print enemy one, else print enemy two, got it. So now let's check the code, see if it works. And look at that, it does work. So that really was all there was to it. So this challenge um, that 1.8 million people completed, all that required was copying and pasting that code. And there's still 15% of the people that attempt it that 
didn't do that. That didn't copy and paste the code. So I don't know why. Uh, but anyway, so you're ready to learn code and play. That's all. That's all it took. Submit your solution to verify the robustness of your program in different situations. Now let's play more advanced coding games. So we're going to submit, and it gives us our completion. All right. So we're going to go back to home. So that was the onboarding challenge again. And now we're going to do um, one that is a little bit more challenging because they're not giving us the uh you know they're not going to let us copy and paste only about half of the people finished this one this is called the descent and it's sort of like a star trek themed sort of thing uh, you, you know you'll see when you get in here it's um what do they call it like kirk's kirk's quest so here we go this is the first stage of the descent and we're trying to land this ship uh, presumably the enterprise, but it doesn't say that. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna uh, try to land this ship, and the goal is to destroy the mountains before your starship collides with one of them. Um, and you know what? I'm actually gonna get rid of the code that's in there already, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna start fresh. So this is gonna be from scratch. So it says at the end of each game turn. You are given the height of eight mountains from left to right. By the end of the game turn, you must fire on the highest mountain by outputting its index from zero to seven. So one of the things in programming that takes a little bit of getting used to is that the starting point is not one. So like when you're counting, you know, you usually go one, two, three. That's not how you do it in programming. You start from zero. So we're going to go from zero to seven. That's going to be all eight of the, of the mountains. And firing on a mountain will only destroy part of it, reducing its height. Your ship descends after each pass. So we're going to be victorious if we can destroy every mountain. We're going to lose if our ship cr crashes into a mountain. Uh, or if we provide incorrect output or your system times out. So if we don't give it a command or if we give it a wrong command, then uh, or a, a command it can't read, I, I should say, uh, then that's the case where we're going to lose. All right, so... Uh, it says, no, don't forget to run the tests by launching them from the test cases window. That's down here. That's where we're going to play our test cases. Uh, the test cases, the tests provided and the validators used to calculate your score are slightly different to avoid hard-coded solutions. So in other words, they're making sure that it's like a general solution that you're putting in. It's not specific to these particular test cases. So... The gain of input, it says, within an infinite loop, read the heights of the mountains from the standard input and print to the standard output index, uh, the index of the mountain to shoot. So notice we're not trying to say how high the mountain is. We're tr we have to give the index of the mountain to shoot. And they're going to give us eight lines of input. So those are going to be the mountain heights. And it's, it's going to be one single line that we have to output that's going to have one integer for the index of which mountain to shoot. So that's all we have to do is just print which mountain to shoot. So it's hard coded right now as a four. It says print four. So if we run this, we're going to go ahead and uh, do descending mountains. And you can see it's going to hit mountain four. Okay, so we took out mountain four. But the problem is that now we're going to crash into mountain zero because you can see that was the tallest mountain. That was the one that we needed to take out. And we didn't take that one out because we wasted our time on mountain four. So we can't, um, you know, we can't shoot the wrong mountains or else we're going to crash. All right. So here is our code. Anything that's in green that's got a hashtag there, that, those are comments. So the computer does not read that. Um, we're communicating to it only with this import, uh, the while loop, the four, I and range eight. So basically this is saying, it wants to iterate eight times. So it's going to be I equals zero, then I equals one, then I equals two, then I equals three. And it's going to keep doing that until it's done that eight times. That's what that for I in range eight does. Uh, and what it's doing is it's feeding us the mountain H variables, the, the height of each of the mountains. When you see an equal sign in Python, that means that it is assigning a value. So the variable mountain h is a that's a variable that's an integer um, that is being assigned a value. 
So that could be any value from zero to nine, I believe is the uh, limitation for that. Usually they give the constraints here. Yeah, it says zero to nine inclusive. Those are the heights of the mountains. So it's that integer right there is constrained to be somewhere between zero and nine. And uh, and then at the end of all that, once we once it's uh, fed us all of those mountains, it's having us print, and in this case, it's printing four. Now, obviously, this is not going to be enough to solve the the puzzle because we don't want it to just hit four. So what we want to do, I'll go ahead and show you um, the first strategy. There's there's a couple ways that I've solved this solved this problem as I learned more commands. Um, but the easiest one that doesn't require a whole lot of commands, it just requires uh, pretty much an if statement and uh, just assigning regular variables, integers. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, mountain height. Or no, I'm going to say max height. That's all I'll say. Max height equals zero. So I'm going to say that the tallest mountain is zero. And that sounds ridiculous, but bear with me. I'll, I'll explain why in a second. And then I'm going to say the um, uh, best target or best index. I'll call it index because that's really what it is. Equals zero. I'm going to I'm going to put the best index as zero as well, which is going to be the best index. That's going to be my target, and that's going to be the index of the mountain, because these mountains are in order, right? You had mountains zero through seven. And so whatever the index is, that's the mountain we have to shoot, right? And so um, that's that's the, the number that I am going to have that print. So these are not um, labeled as integers, but Python, by just looking at it and by evaluating it and seeing that I've set it equal to zero, which is an integer, it's going to know, oh, okay, well, then that variable is an integer. Some languages require you to be very explicit and to um, to define at the beginning that that is an integer. And I, I really don't mind that, actually. That's one of the things about Python that is sometimes listed as like a, why it's so easy to use. Um, and it is easier, but I don't think it's necessarily all that big of a deal um but i you know i do like that it's uh it's able to figure that out that is kind of a cool thing so anyway we've got uh for i in range eight mountain height now as as it goes through this we're kind of losing that information right now it's like it's like uh going into a bucket and the bucket has no bottom like that's kind of what's happening because we're not we're not catching that information anyway in any way it's being put into a variable and then the next iteration so imagine when i is zero um it it's starting this and it's giving us the value of uh what the mountain zero is which this is going to be the tallest mountain so this is probably nine um so it's giving us a mountain nine. it's giving nine as the value it we're, it's it's putting that value into mountain h and then after it's pushed that value in it iterates again because there's no other, there's nothing else happening. Um, and by the way, the notice that this is indented. Um, that's very important in Python. Uh, the indentations basically say that this command belongs to that for loop. So it, uh, that for loop, as it goes through its, you know, its its range from zero to uh, seven, it's going to um, uh, keep on assigning according to, to what's happening here that's in that indented section. And then once the, once the for loop is done, then it goes back to the next command that's at the same indentation level as the for. So you see how the print and the for are at the same indentation level. So again, indentation is really, really important in, in Python. You do get a hang for it, a hang of it, and uh, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense as you go. But when you're, when you're first, uh, introduced to it, you know, that can be a little bit confusing, but um, it's pretty intuitive. So what we're going to do is we're going to say for this mountain H, we're going to compare it 
to the max height. And this is why I set the max height at zero because I'm going to um, take the mountain H and if I'm going to, I'm going to introduce a new command here. If um, max height, no, if mountain H, I'll do it this way. If mountain H is greater than max height, then, so we don't actually type out the word then, we just put those semicolon, then hit enter. And what I want it to do is if this, if this situation is true, then I want it to now change max height to equal the mountain H and I want the best index to equal I because whatever, uh, whichever level it's at, whatever mountains stage that we're on in the in, in that uh, index from zero to, it's actually zero to seven because uh, we're doing range eight. So it's going to do that eight times, which is zero to seven. So whichever number it's on, that's the best index. That's what I want to set it to. That's the mountain I want it to hit. And so now I'm going to replace this four with best index. And let's see if that does it. So I'm going to play the test cases. And there we go. We are passing some test cases here. And you can um, go back to, let's say, the scattered mountains. Uh, let's go and watch this thing just by individually playing that particular test case. And it's a little bit satisfying to see that it is really working, right? Every single pass that Kirk goes through, he is able to knock down a mountain. So we are cruising. There we go, knocking him down. And that's it. Okay, I think he's, I think he's safe. Yeah, you're clear for landing. Okay, so he's gotten all the mountains down, perfect. We're going to submit and we are done. So that is uh, pretty much all there is to that particular puzzle. This is, I think, maybe the easiest puzzle um, out of the ones that are going to give you the 50 experience points. Um, there's, there's some that are 50 experience points. There's some that are 75 experience points on the, the easy level. Um, so when you go to algorithms and you click on easy puzzles, um, there's this one I'm stuck on right here. This is a 50 uh, XP as well. And this has to do with pathfinding. So it's just to kind of jump in here real quick. You can see that it's, um, it, you get these treasure maps and you, like these little arrows are, are starting at, at a particular location and then the arrows are going to a treasure and you have to pick the map that takes you to the treasure the fastest. And, um, you know, so it feeds you all this information and I have been looking at this code for forever and I don't know where I went wrong with it. Um, it does work for some of the text test cases. You can see it, it actually handles, uh, several of those, but when, when there's too many maps or when it's an, a really large map, it, it ends up, it ends up feeling so anyway i don't want to spend a lot of time on this one because i haven't solved it but i just want you guys to see even though it says difficulty easy that does not necessarily mean that it's going to be a cakewalk um so uh you know e even after months of playing on coding game i'm still struggling with some of these uh challenges eventually i'll get it but um i'll probably have to use some different strategies from the ones that i'm using now some different commands and uh, it, you know, just explore different ways of doing it. But um, I just wanted to make the point that not all the puzzles that say they're easy are actually easy. Um, so we go here to these algorithms, and the ones that I've solved um, that were that were easy are down here. So we just talked about the descent and onboarding. Logic gates was definitely not easy. Uh, you can see only two thousand people did that one. Um, so to talk about the popularity of these, uh, Descent was done by more than half a million coding gamers, um, and onboarding was done by 1.8 million. And th uh, there's not that many that are as popular as that. We've got Marslander, 
Um, so I'm, I'll go ahead and do that one too. Um, but you can see that like it really trails off. Temperatures is pretty popular. Thor is pretty popular. Um, ASCII art, that's, you know, 100,000 people. That's nothing to sneeze at. But, um, you know, those are the, usually the easier ones are the ones that have the high number of people that have completed it. Not always, but usually. So we did onboarding. We did descent. Let's do Mars Lander. This one's pretty fun, too. So I'm going to solve Mars Lander and let's um, reset the code. Okay, so here we're starting from scratch again. You can see there's actually quite a lot to this. Uh, it's giving us quite a few variables. We've got um, the initialization is basically putting the surface uh, N of points. So it's giving us a number of points on the surface. And then it's giving us, for however many points there are, it's giving us the x and y coordinates of those uh, of those points. So that's like, you know, this would be the surface where that's a mountain, and then this is the valley, that's another mountain, and we have to land it in that flat area. Now in the first puzzle, the easy mode, we don't really have to worry about that. Like you, you will have to navigate the landscape in the later episodes, but in this first one, you're just landing straight down. So you don't actually have to change the angle. You see how the angle goes from negative 90 to positive 90. That's the first value that you're going to be putting in because when you um, scroll down here to outputs, there's going to be a single line with two integers, the rotation and the power. So how much thrust is the power and rotation is what angle you're, you're moving your ship to. So um, again, we don't have to worry about the rotation in the first um, in the first episode, we're just going to leave that as zero and power is the only thing that we're going to be modifying. The reason why we have to modify it is because if we're, uh, thrusting at max power. So here it says print zero three, let's go ahead and just play it. Let's, let's look at what that looks like. So it, our Mars lander is going to be slowly descending at, um, at a thrust level of three as it goes down. You can see our fuel is being used up here. Um, this, this lasts for 79 turns. We're about halfway through that almost. And we still have a fair amount of fuel. So that's probably not going to be what our problem is. Notice that this vertical speed keeps on increasing because the acceleration due to gravity is, is pulling us down, um, at a, at a faster and faster rate. Our, um, this is a reminder. Crash. our thrust is not sufficient to be able to uh, you know, prevent us from hitting the surface at, at a high speed. So that 59 vertical speed, um, that that's too high because this has got to go, uh, to a speed that is no higher than, let's see, it says, uh, vertical speed must be limited to no more than 40 meters per second. So, um, it, it, it can't be hitting that fast. The vertical speed of 59 is just too, hitting the ground too fast. So, we're going to sometimes have to have max thrust, in other words, to slow us down because it only goes from uh, thrust levels of zero through four. And we're already at three, so we're, we're giving it a pretty good amount of thrust and it's not enough. So sometimes we're going to have to be at a thrust level of four. So let's see. Um, let's see what we got here. We've got the surface again. That was the initialization. Um, Th this whole part here is just initializing the surface, but that is not relevant for our particular puzzle. That's really for future episodes where we're going to have to navigate. So they might start us over here, in other words, rather than straight up and down where we can just land. And so we don't have to really worry about that. We just have the game loop and it gives us the X, the Y, the horizontal speed, which is how fast left or right it's moving. So again, that doesn't really matter very much. The vertical speed, that's how fast it's falling down. And you can see that was the problem. That's where we died. The fuel, which obviously we can't run out of fuel. That's going to be a problem. Uh, and rotation, we're not going to be messing with rotation and power. So the reason why it's giving us rotation and power um, as inputs, even though that's something that we should be giving as outputs, is because you can't change by more than um, one thrust level. And you can't change by more than 15 degrees with the rotation. If you if you read through the notes on this, which are pretty, you know, it's pretty complicated. 
you realize that you you're not going to be able to uh, change it immediately. You have to like gradually change the rotation and, gra and gradually change the power down uh, or up. And so um, that's why it's telling you what it currently is. And then you're telling it what you want to target. So all of that uh, is to say, w let's, let's really zoom in on the stuff that matters. So vertical speed, we already identified that as the issue, right? So vertical speed matters. That's where our problem is. Um, fuel was not really an issue. We didn't run out of fuel. So maybe we could save fuel. Maybe we could be more fuel efficient than 266, but that's not the thing that killed us. So that's, that's worth remembering. The rest of these are pretty irrelevant because they are talking about navigation and navigation is not our problem. We, uh, we're, we're just currently focused on just getting a soft landing. So um, really it's just vertical speed that's going to dictate how much thrust we should do. So why don't we do this? We're going to, we're going to take this as an, another if statement. So if um, vertical speed, and notice that I'm doing this within the game loop. So this is updating each turn. Uh, so if ver V speed is, um, let's say if it's, if it's greater than 40, right? Cause that's, that's where we're going to land. So if it's greater than 40, what should we print? Let's print zero four. So that's that's the format that seems to work here. If you're you could put it in as a string, you could probably put them in as integers too. I think we could probably say zero comma four, and it's going to automatically put a space between those integers. So let's do it. Let's do it both ways. So this one I'll I'll do as an integer. The other one I'll keep, um, and and I'm going to use an else statement. So that's saying that in every other case, um, if the vertical speed is uh, less than or equal to 40, in other words, then it's supposed to print 0, 3. So I'm going to try this again and see what it says. Let's see if we win. All right, we did not win, but let's see what happens. It still, it still went 79. It didn't seem to break, though. Uh, and not notice that this, um, this print 0, 4, if we look here at the output uh it's it's doing zero three right now it's still in the else because you can see this vertical speed is um this vertical speed is still low enough that it's not triggering the thrust level of four but now it is okay so now now we're going we're going fast here we're going 48 49 and what's the output level it's still three it's just still zero three so uh that's that's not good then okay so that didn't work. What if, what if we took into account the fact that this is velocity? It's not just speed. So let's, let's look here at the, and this happens all the time, by the way, you, you know, you think you've got exactly the plan that's going to win. And then you go and find out that there is something nuanced about the variable that you're that you're looking into that um, would make it not fit what you're trying to do currently. So the, let's see, the horizontal and vertical speed, see how these are between negative 500 and positive 500. So that means because they can be negative, this is a velocity. If it's negative, then it's falling according to the orientation of, of uh, you know, how they explain it. And so because it's falling, we really need it to be if the speed is less than negative 40, because it's talking about the um, absolute value when it when it describes the speed that it has to be in order to land successfully, it says vertical speed must be limited to less than or equal to 40 meters per second per second in absolute value. So another way that we could write this is if the absolute value, maybe this is another way if absolute value, so ABS function, if absolute value is greater than 40. So that could, that would also be a way to fix uh, the issue that I was having, having. So I'm going to try that landing again. It didn't work, but notice that now we're not going 79 turns. We're going 84 turns. So let's uh, zoom ahead here a little bit and see what's happening around, around turn 50. We see that the vertical speed is, it's, it's, 
staying put at about 40 or 41. And if we look at the console, you can see that it is outputting somewhere between zero and three. So this is actually working the way that we want it to. The problem is that when it, at that moment, at that particular moment, it was a vertical speed of 41. So right here is a vertical speed of 40. And if it had landed right there, it probably should have been fine because, um, because it said that the vertical speed must be limited to less than or equal to 40 meters per second. So uh, 41 was too high, but 40 would have worked. So what if we just make it trigger the maximum thrust just a little bit earlier? So I'm going to make this now uh, 39. So if the absolute value of the vertical speed is greater than 39, then we're going to do maximum thrust. So now let's try it again. And find out if that worked and look at that green straight landing it worked so as we as we go down you can see that the maximum vertical speed uh, it fluctuates now not between 40 and 41 but between 39 and 40 and so this is going to land and there we are perfect so we still had 224 fuel to, left to spare. I'll bet we could get lower. What if we, what if we had this as zero one? I'm just kind of curious if that would help us to, that would help us to get a landing uh, with more fuel or less fuel. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna have more fuel. So that's, that's one way that we can, um, we can sort of play with the, logic here and see what gives the best results and here 273 so you know you you have a couple options on how to um how to play with that we're not really getting very deep into it so uh you know you can fiddle around with that but um that's good enough we we, we were able to not only complete this, but, but do it with plenty of fuel to spare. So we're going to submit and we're done. So we're going to go back to home. And that was the Mars lander episode one. Episode two is uh, considerably more challenging because you do have to navigate, but I'm going to leave that to you guys to play around with later. Um, next, I want to go to an AI bot. So this is Mad Pod Racing. You can see that there are 162,000, more than 162,000 people who have uh, uh, played this. I'm in the Silver League, so it's it's uh, not going to let me show you the like introductory kinds of things that it wants you to do. Uh, it's already got some more advanced. Uh, it's already got some more advanced commands like Shield and and uh and boost that you're not initially going to have access to uh, but i'm going to i'm going to go ahead and and reset the code here this, this is this is what you're originally going to get and let's let's play the code um so let's see how that stacks up against the computer so here you're playing against a computer you're not just solving a puzzle you're actually trying to outperform and you can see oh boy sabalba is really crushing us here so this is a little bit of a Star Wars themed kind of a thing. Um, the pod racing is not going well for me right now because I'm using the introductory code that they start you with. And actually, this is not the very first line of code that they're going to give you. They're going to give you something with like both of these being X and you have to spot what the thing to fix is. And that's all it is. You just have to out of all this information and all the all the rules and everything like that there there's a typo in there and you have to find that typo and fix the typo so i know that kind of spoils the punchline a little bit of what they're trying to do but if you're watching a video like this then you know you're doing your research you're trying to figure it out so i'll give you that little hint uh all right so clearly we're gonna have to do more in order to tighten up our our corners here get a little bit more uh speed on the on the runways there because you can see that this is only going 80. what if we what if we change this to 100 and let's let's see how that plays and i think we're gonna at least have a easier time of 
keeping up with them, hopefully. So, is it playing? Okay, here we go. Play. Now, he's blasting off right at the beginning because he's using one of his boosts. But you see how you see how our our pod is just swinging so far and oh I overshot it and oh man there's like this is this is really ugly racing here <laughs> this isn't you know I'm going to I'm going to go far in those sweeping corners so one of the things that you're going to do uh early on with this is you're going to do some if statements so if um let, let's say uh if the here let's look at the rules first so the um the only things that we're going to be uh giving as our output it says two integers for the target uh coordinates of your pod followed by thrust so it's going to be the target of where we want to go. So that's going to be the string of next checkpoint X and next checkpoint Y, um, which they kindly put into this for us. So it's going to it's going to be those strings, and then it's going to be uh, the thrust level. And what we could do is we could we could say the next checkpoint angle. See how this uh, says. Uh, next checkpoint angle is the angle in degrees between your pod orientation and the direction of the next checkpoint. So it, that could, that's going to go from negative 180 to positive 180. And what if the next checkpoint angle was, if it was greater than 90 or we could even we could do the same trick we did last time absolute value because remember it's positive and negative so if if the absolute value of the next checkpoint angle is greater than 90 then what if we took this same thing here but we said thrust is zero let's make that thrust zero else and then we want it to do everything like normal so if we if we play now let's see what that does all right so it looks like we're keeping up with Sabalva a little bit better he just used a thrust but we're cutting those corners a little bit tighter we're not swinging as far out and we're not overshooting some of those as quite as badly oh that one's bad that one's bad Oh, that's ugly. Okay, so what if what if we do this now? Um, we're, so that's that's one reason to slow down the thrust. Another might be you can see that as we're getting as we're getting closer. What if we slow down? That might that might help if we're if we're very close to it, um, and our angle is not so good, then we would want to slow down. So let's say if absolute next, oh, another another point to make here. Notice here that I'm using what's called snake case. This is where there's underscores in between each lowercase word. This is called snake case, and that is how they gave us these variables. But if you look in the directions, this is called camel case, where they have the first word lowercase and the next word has an upper uh, uppercase letter beginning the next word. So this is called camel case, very common. Uh, so is snake case. But the directions have a different case than the code that they started you off with. And so if you're not aware of that, that can be a source of quite a lot of confusion because it's one of those things where you don't really notice it it, they they look very similar. I, I wish they had been a little bit more attentive to that because that, especially on an early, um, this is one of the first AI bots that you're going to be playing. And, you know, in an early contest like that, you're probably not going to be wise to that possibility. And so you could potentially get very frustrated. So I know I did. Uh, and And so, you know, just be aware of that and 
uh, you know, make sure that you're using the correct case. You could change these all to be camel case if you wanted to, and then change the later instances of this to be in camel case so that it's consistent with the directions. But, um, you know, you don't, you don't really need to. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. So uh, the absolute value, I'm going to again use next uh, checkpoint angle. And it's going to be, now I'm going to say, what if it's greater than 45? Uh, and I'm going to put another condition. And uh, let's say next checkpoint dist is less than, uh, I don't know, let's say, 300 and I don't really know if that's if that's going to be uh, it says the pods have a circular force field around the center with a radius of 400 units so that's not very far 300, 300 does not seem very far because it's going to be with their shield that's their shield radius so if that's you know that, that's not much uh, let's let's make this um, 800 which is probably still not enough but uh, so if if the checkpoint angle is 45 is more than 45 and the next checkpoint distance is less than 800 then we're at risk of flying past it like we were doing before so let's uh in that case print um i'm going to take i'm going to copy and n notice that i'm copying this because i that formatting is a little tricky and i don't want to risk you know putting an extra space in there or something like that it'll mark it wrong uh, it, it'll give me an error message. So I just copy and paste it to save myself a bit of grief, and then I'm just going to change this. So that's going to be 50. So now let's play the code again and see what happens now as we approach. Okay, so we're passing that, and you can see we're kind of slowing down. Oh, we still missed it. Okay, and that's that's terrible. Okay, so let's let's make this a little bit further out. So maybe 1,000 and a little bit slower too. So that's maybe 40 and let's play. And you can see a lot of this is really just trying to fine tune. Um, okay, so that was not so bad. Uh, yeah, we're just trying to fine tune to make it so that this runs a little bit better each iteration. So we're not going to get it for perfect on the first try. We're just going to keep playing with these numbers a little bit and trying to get a little bit more efficient each time. And that is how we program better. Um, you know, you don't you don't produce a perfect you don't produce perfect code on the first try. You have to slowly get there. So I don't know why I did that. That's, oh, this is not good. Look at it it's spinning around like that. Why is it doing that? Uh, next checkpoint. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that, but that's probably as much time as I want to spend on. Oh, it's because of this if if. That's why. This needs to be l if. So what that did is, it was fitting this criteria, and it was also fitting this criteria. That's the reason why. Um, it, it was actually fitting both of those. And so it didn't know what to print and it was actually printing both of those lines, which is why we were having such a weird look to it. What the elif does is when the, the if statement begins it, so if this, okay, if that isn't met, then it goes to the elif, then it goes to this one. And if that isn't met, then it goes to the else. Whereas before it was if, okay, so it did that and that's true. And now it's going to also do what was here. It's starting a new loop. It's starting a new if loop. So we had to do L if so that now this is like one, two, three, rather than one and then another one and two, right? So uh, this, this should work a lot better. We're not going to see, I think, our uh, pod go in weird loops now. So here we go. And we were actually first for a second there. Okay. Oh, we missed that. We missed that. But all right. We're not as horrible as we've been. So it did. Okay. I got it. It got it. Okay. Uh, yeah, it got it. And he even bumped us. So we're in first. 
Look at that. We temporarily got first. Uh, let's see. Hey, look at that. We won first. <laughs> that's the, and this is in Silver League. So that's a pretty tough opponent. And this Logic was able to beat that, uh, that computer this time. And uh, we didn't even use Boost. So that's, that's pretty interesting. So uh, just with a couple lines of code, I'm not saying you'll necessarily get to silver with that, but it can sometimes be beat a silver bot. Those are, those are kind of different things. Maybe it's going to beat it like one out of 10 or something like that. Whereas to get to silver, you really need to beat it more like six out of 10 or something like that. So, uh, but anyway, this is a good start. It gives you a way of thinking about how to improve your AI of your, of your bot, like what it's going to do in which situation. This is called heurist, a heuristic approach. So, you know, if, if this general situation where, um, you know, your, uh, your angle is really, really high, uh, then that tells you that you need to just cut the thrust because you're going in the wrong direction. Uh, you know, and then in, if it's in this situation, then here's what you do. And if it's in this situation, then here's what you do. And you're not necessarily accounting for every situation and you're not being like really specific about how to handle uh, every scenario, but you're you're giving it a broad set of ideas of, of what to do. So that's uh, that's a that's a really good initial approach. There's other types of AI approaches like genetic algorithms and neural nets and all kinds of crazy stuff. And you will need those for the legendary league and a lot of these things. But for silver league, you, you're not going to need that. And uh, and you can see I've I've gotten pretty far. I'm I'm now at at mentor level according to their, um, you know I'm in the top five thousand out of all those uh, uh, millions of players. But again, most of them drop off, right? The the only they only really start at twenty thousand with the the higher levels, and there's there's not going to be millions of people that are. Uh, really putting a lot of effort into this because most people, again, most people will give up. So um, if you just keep plugging away at it, like I did, you keep trying new things. I'm, I'm by no means um, a professional level programmer yet, but I can solve a lot of these problems and, and I can make progress in a lot of these um, clashes and uh, in the AI programs, the, the, um, competitions. So you can see over here, compete and compete and um, all these different challenges. And even with just a little bit of uh, experience and, and a little bit of um, uh, just a handful of commands, I, I've gotten pretty far with this. So uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. And again, if you're in the, in the top, let's say in the top 5,000, that's probably not enough to start getting jobs. So what I've shown you is not going to be enough to, um, to land that job, but uh, it's, it's a starting point, right? I've only been doing this for a few months and I'm making so much more progress because I am doing it in a gamified atmosphere where it's actually a lot of fun. And I don't feel uh, totally discouraged when I, when I fail at something because I just go do something else and it's not like in school where if you get a bad grade on a test, then that's going to count against you. That's going to loom over you for the entire thing. This isn't like that because if you fail at one of those attempts, if you fail at a puzzle, if you, if you get a, a bad score in a competition, it, doesn't, it can't hurt you. Everything only helps you, right? So you can only gather points. You can't lose points by attempting things. So I feel like that needs to be mentioned as well, that it's, they, they used good game structure when setting up the incentives for how to uh, grow on the platform and how to, how to um, get to the point where you're noticed by employers. All right, so I think that's probably as far as I'm gonna go with this episode. Again, we did um, Mars Lander, we did Descent, we did the... Uh, uh, what was it? The pod, pod racing, and we also did just the introductory um, puzzles. So 
you know, that gives you quite a lot to start with. And I know it's a lot to digest, but you can always refer back to this and, and try it on your own. See if you can do that independently. And then if you get stuck, you see, you know, what, what you needed to fix. Um, and I'm going to try to go through all of the, as you can see, I've, I've done the, uh, easy puzzles. These are the ones that I've already done. So I'm going to try to go in future episodes over each of these easy puzzles as I do them quote unquote easy, right? I mean, there, some of these are, some of these are actually pretty tough. I'll, I'll just click on this one to give you an idea of, of how much code I had to do for this. So this was, this was uh, pretty confusing. I actually ended up doing what's called object oriented programming, which is setting up classes. And, uh, it, it there, there's a lot to this, but it was fun. I, I really liked this one. Um, but easy is not what it should have been under medium. Anyway, I will see you guys next episode. We're going to go through some more easy puzzles. I'm going to show you some more AI bots. So like and, like and subscribe if you want more of these videos. And I will see you next time.